Hello, my name is Alfredo Salmon Munjage from Lukea, Tanzania. Welcome in this session of History Form 1 to proceed with uh, the third topic, which is which is uh, the the economic activities and their impacts. So, on the last session, we ended on looking the pottery. So now we are going to look on the other on the other handicrafty industry which is weaving and the basketry. It means that weaving and the basketry industry was another handicraft industry which was taking place in Africa. In Africa before the coming of colonialists. Some people were skilled in making various items by weaving. To mean that some people in pre-colonial African societies were skilled in making various items by weaving. Uh, and the required raw materials included grasses, leaves and the fibers. Uh, in East Africa, the law, the law were experts in basketry and in Yakusa were experts in making mats to mean that in East Africa the law the the law not law the law were the law were expert experts in basketry and in Yakusa were experts in making mats. So you can see that those societies were expert in weaving and the basketry industry. Uh, let us see advantages of weaving and basketry or the uses of the, the, uh, the advantages of weaving and uh, basketry. What was the importance of these activities? The first one, some communities built houses and uh, boats. To mean that some of the communities used the, the it means they use the skills of basketry and uh, weaving to build houses and uh, boats by using the raw materials which were used in uh, weaving and basketry. Also, supply the communities with items such as beds and mats. It means that the, the communities which were expertised in uh, making the mats and the beds Support supply those items in the society which are no such items. Uh, and the third one is the, the advantage of weaving and basketry provided items for trade. It means that those societies which were producing those basketry and uh, weaving items were provided the items for trading activities whereby the society exchanged it with those items in return of other items like keto, iron tools and others. Uh, and the first one provided containers to carry loads easily, for example Kikuyu and Kamba, it means Kenyans, to mean that the, 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 the societies which were producing those basketry and weaving items provided or provided containers to carry loads easily. For example, the Kikuyu and the Kamba were the societies which were benefited from that the activities resulted in weaving and basketry. Also the fifth one, the women the wo sorry, the woven fish troops and the nets. To mean that woven fish troops and uh, nets to mean that these were fishing Instruments which were woven and and uh, made by the societies which were which had the skills of making those items that would be used in fishing activities. So fish troops and the nets were woven or uh, and were made by those societies. So that was another advantage. It means that items or instruments for fishing was enabled them to capture or to extract aquatic materials or aquatic resources like fish and other aquatic resources in their water bodies. Uh, and the last one provided storage for agricultural produce or products. It means that the 
weaving and the basketry activities provided the provided the storage for agricultural products like grains to mean that the grains were uh, were stored were stored in those items which were made from the weaving and basketry activities so that was all about weaving and basketry industry another was textile production or cloth making industry textile production or cloth making industry textile production was the making of cloth or the making of cloth from different materials or raw materials uh, it means that the textile industry in the making of clothes from different raw materials uh, and bark cloth was made from three barks among the Nyakusa, Buhaya and the Buganda. It means that uh, the bark cloth or the bark clothes was made or were made from three barks. It means that the barks of the trees were, were embarked from the tree and used the as raw materials to make clothes and the societies which were skillful and knowledgeable about that was included in Yakusa, Buhaya and the Buganda uh, and, and silk production was mainly in Nigeria and Madagascar and those all the silk and the tree and and, and
availability of there was no extra land to move to availability of rainfall also irrigation tillersing and fertilizers so that's why they say to have the permanent crop cultivation because there are no these things which I have mentioned examples of these areas where permanent cultivation was carried out include the following it means that the areas whereby permanent crop cultivation was take place uh, include Egypt, uh, Cambrai region in the northeastern Togo, among the Chagas on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, the Lodge of Zambia, uh, the Akamba of Kenya, uh, slopes slopes of mountain mill southern island of tanzania and the central kenyan islands and these all were areas where permanent cultivation was taking place in pre-colonial african societies and the last one was indian ocean coastline northwest of lake victoria uh, these all i've mentioned one up to seven uh, these were areas where permanent cultivation were taking place. Uh, so let us see the the mixed farming. The mixed farming. This was kind of agriculture which includes crop cultivation and animal keeping. To mean that this was including the cultivation of crops and the animal keeping on the same time that was called the mixed farming mainly in grassland areas with seasonal rainfall to mean that it was taking place in areas mainly with seasonal rainfall uh, and the grassland areas were good for growing crops and the post and pastures for animals to mean that the grassland areas were we are good for we are good for growing crops and the pastures for animals. Uh, the crops grown was such as the sorghum, maize, cassava, beans, and millet. These were crops which were grown under the permanent. I mean, mixed farming or mixed cultivation. Uh, and the and the, the animals which were kept in mixed farming uh, were goats, dunk, kettles, oars, sheep, uh, and etc. So this kind of agriculture was common among the waha, nyamwezi, fipa, hehe, kikuyu, etc. It means that the mixed farming was taking place in in areas like. Uh, Waha, Nyamwez, Fipa, Hehe, and, uh, and the Kikuyu in Kenya. So these were areas where uh, mixed farming was taking place during the pre-colonial African societies. Uh, the another part is uh, pastoralism, which is as I've told you that agriculture was categorized or in three types. The first one was the mixed farming and the second one was pastoralism and the last one was, was crop cultivation. Uh, the pastoralism is the practice of keeping livestock such as cattle, sheep, camels and goats. To mean that pastoralism is a practice of keeping stock, livestock such as cattle, sheep, camels, and goats. One important factor in the spread of pastoralism in Africa was the presence or absence of the tisse tisse fry. To me, that one important factor in the spread of pastoralism in Africa was the presence or absence of tisse tisse fry. To mean that the place where at Tisetise Fry there were no, no pastoralism, while where there was the Tisetise Fry there were 
I mean where there was Tisetise Fry, there were no pastoralism and where there were pastoralism, Tisetise Fry were not there. These flies cause this sleeping sickness to human and the hypersonomiasis to domestic animals and the pastoralists avoided Tisetise Fry infected areas especially in the moist low-lying valleys and the thick forest regions. Examples of the pastoralists in Africa uh, include the Flani of West Africa, uh, the Gaua and Somali of Northeast Africa, Mahasai of East Africa, they are just in Tanzania and Kenya, also Balabai, Balabai and Kalamajong of East Africa. These also were the pastoralist society in pre-colonial Africa. Uh, let us see the types, the two types of pastoralism. There was nomadic pastoralism and sedentary pastoralism. This is the type of pastoralism. Uh, the first one is nomadic pastoralism, as you saw the seasonal movement of people with their cattle or livestock in search of water and the pasture. It means that nomadic pastoralism, this was the system or the seasonal movement of people with their cattle from one place to another for searching pasture and water. And many nomadic pastoralists lived on, on, depending on meat, milk and the blood to mean the pastoralist society were highly depending on feeding or eating the meat fresh meat milk and the blood uh, they occupy the scrub rent and the savanna regions it means that those societies which were which were pastoralist or nomadic pastoralist societies were Occupying the scrubs, uh, scrubs land and the savanna regions, uh, and those areas get little rain. Which means those areas we are getting little rain. Examples of nomadic pastoralists include Tolnes, the Flani, the Barber, the Omomo the Kalamajong and the Maasai. These are the examples of the nomadic pastoralists. And the second type of pastoralism is sedentary pastoralism. Sedentary means staying or living in the same area, means having the permanent settlement. Sedentary pastoralists did not move from place to place. Example, the agriculturists Maasai Kwavi the animals kept by such communities are fewer than those kept by the nomadic pastoralists. So you can see that Kwavi, the society of Maasai agriculturists, were settling in permanent settlement and they are fewer animals than the, past the nomadic pastoralists. So let us see how agriculture changed the man's life. What's the, what were the effects of agriculture or how agriculture changed man's life? So the, we are proceeding with how agriculture changed man's life. Uh, the, the first thing, how agriculture changed man's life or the effect of agriculture to man's life is it led to the production of more food in these societies to mean that uh, agriculture increased the production of more food in the societies. Also, agriculture forced the people to settle down in one place. It means that agriculture contributed to the establishment of permanent settlement. Also, it encouraged the social and the political organization. It means that agriculture encouraged the social and the political organizations like the formation of states, kingdoms, and the empires. Uh, also, it led to the expansion of exchange trade due to surplus. It means that the surplus was produced as the, the expansion of exchange trade was, was, was emerged. And the fifth one, it encouraged the specialization of work in the societies or in the society. For example, people began to practice medicine 
priestry duties and the different class. It means that agriculture led to the encouragement of specialization of work in the society. It says some people were based on medicine, others priestly duties were made also as a different crafts were done. Also some people become wealthier than the other in the society due to the presence of more rent and the animals. It means that some people become wealthier than the others in the society because of having the large right of rent and the and large number of animals. Now, uh, the, another one, the agriculturists were forced to come up with the new religions that could save their animals or lives of, for example, new gods. It means that the agriculturists were forced to come with the new religions that they could save their animals or livestock. So they come up with new believings, like having many gods, uh, uh, having the many gods. And the last one is the last one is agriculture led to the introduction of science and technology. To me, that agriculture led to the introduction of science and technology. For example, in Egypt, there was need for irrigation. It means that the agriculture led to the introduction of science and technology, as the Egyptians were using the irrigation schemes during the dry season uh, though, so that's where the effects of agriculture to man's life or the how agriculture changed the man's life so uh, up to there i would like to wind up our session and i would like to leave the exercise which comprise three questions and the first one is Mason areas practiced the pastoralism in pre-colonial East Africa. In pre-colonial East Africa. And the second one listed down for handicrafts industries existed in pre-colonial Africa. The third one is define the following terms as used in history. The first one is pastoralism. Second is mixed farming. Third is sedimentary sedentary pastoralism and the last one is agriculture so until there i would like to thank you for being with me from the end if i mean from the beginning to the end i would like to congratulate you and i wish you to have nice studies and welcome in the coming classes for more learning from educare tanzania uh, i wish you the all the best uh, in following our our channels in in different in different websites so welcome to learning in educare uh, for the best choice have a good time